Hello, and welcome to another BlenderWiz video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be covering some basics in the rigid body physics panel and playing with some force fields to create a fun little animated clip. Beginning with the default cube selected, we can expand the rigid bodies tool in the tool menu here. To enable rigid body physics for this object, click Add Active. We can see this instantly take effect when the cube turns green. Also, if we press Alt-A, the cube will begin to fall. Since there is nothing for the cube to interact with, this is quite boring. The fun begins when other in objects are introduced to the scene. So let's add a plane. And scale it up some. Not that big. There we go. And click Add Passive. Now, if we drag our cube up and press Alt-A, we can see that the cube collides with the plane. This still isn't the most exciting animation, so let's duplicate the cube and, by hitting Shift-D, bring it down and rotate it a little bit. And if we play, it's a little bit more interesting. While falling is fun, for our animation, we want the objects to uh, cluster toward a central object. First thing we need to do is turn off the gravity. Over in the Scenes tab of the Properties panel, there is a drop-down called Gravity. We can either turn this off by unchecking gravity, or we can just turn this uh, Z value down to zero. Uh, I'm just going to uncheck gravity here. If we press Alt-A now, since the cubes were actually intersecting a little bit, they pushed off of each other, and they are responding like they are in zero gravity. If we separate them and press Alt-A, they won't do anything at all. Now the uh, cubes will remain suspended, and really we no longer need our plane, so let's just delete it. We're going to create the force field object now, so First, I'm going to delete the second cube here and go into front view. Let's create a new empty plane axis. And now let's head over to the physics tab and enable force field. So you'll notice that it now has these circles around it and the type is set to force. Right now, the strength is set to one. So if we press Alt A, you'll notice it pushes out a little bit, but it's not very strong. So let's just bring that cube in a little bit closer. And if we turn up the uh, amount to, I don't know, 30, it will push a little bit harder. So positive values push away, negative values pull in toward the center. So um, let's set this to maybe negative 300. If we press Alt A, it will pull it in toward the side center, and then it'll kind of swing out. Notice that this isn't completely accurate as uh, the cube keeps getting further and further away from the center as it oscillates. If it were in the real world, it would slowly come toward the center. And eventually, it would actually just stop there. Um, so for our animation, this actually won't affect it too much because we're going to have all these objects colliding in with each other anyway, so we won't actually notice if nothing comes to a stop here, because something else will be pushing in and moving it around. So now that we have our cube floating around the force field, it is time to make some collisions happen, and this will make it more interesting. Before we start bringing in a whole bunch of objects to collide with, we should first change the collision type from convex hull to box. While this, while the uh, convex hull is effective for more complicated shapes, uh, we have a very primitive shape right now, so using a convex hull is a waste of CPU power. Let's, now that it's set to box, it will use a bunch, it will use a lot fewer calculations to compute where it is. So we can actually just have a whole bunch of objects now running in real time, whereas before it would have been a little bit choppier. 
The sphere option, if you notice here, is also very inexpensive, and it is quite accurate. The mesh, on the other hand, is the most expensive. It calculates every point on the mesh exactly, and uh, you will want to avoid this one if at all possible. Before we go and create a bunch of new objects, we can throw in a little bevel modifier to smooth the edges a little bit. And then, uh, of course, set the shading to smooth. So let's just throw that in there. I'm going to turn the width down a little bit and set the shading to smooth. So now comes the fun part. Duplicate. Just go crazy. And, of course, don't forget we have more axes here, so just basically just make it random. Or as random as possible. And then if we press play, they'll all come clustering together. I'm going to actually have two kinds of cubes here. Some large black ones and some smaller silver ones. So I'm just going to duplicate it and shrink them down. And just keep duplicating and have fun with it. Basically just go nuts. <laughs> Okay, so that should probably be enough cubes now. Now we are going to quickly set up the lighting and scene setup. The scene is going to consist of three lamps and a backdrop plane. Before working on the setup, let's delete the default lamp. And then let's reposition this camera. Just hit Alt-G and then Alt-R to clear the rotation and position. We're going to want to... Uh, Rotate this along the X by 90 degrees so that it's actually facing out, and then move it back along the Y until it's right about there. Should be good. Just as long as the center is somewhere on the camera, because that is where all of our cubes will eventually meet. Okay, so uh, now let's create a plane. This will be our backdrop plane. So rotate it along the X by 90 degrees, then just drag it back so that none of our none of our cubes are going to intersect it. Then from camera view, let's just scale it up so that it fills the entire camera. Next, we're going to need to create three lamps. A left lamp that is cooler, a top lamp that is uh, neutral, and a right lamp that is warm. So let's bring in a new plane. I'm going to name it lamp underscore top. And then uh, let's actually just uh, scale it up so that it's about, or so that our edge is about one third the width of our backdrop here. And then just take these back two vertices, drag them back, scale them down along the X. About there should be good. And just drag it to the top, like so. We may want to bring this one out just a little bit more. And just make sure it's not in the uh, view of our camera at all. Next, we're going to create the left lamp. So just duplicate that top lamp, rotate along the Y 40 or negative 45 degrees, like so. And just put it down so that's corners right there. And then we're just going to take these back two vertices here, drag them out along the X away from our background. Okay, let's do that again for the uh, the right lamp. Just rotate it 45 degrees along the Y. There we go. Bring it down like so. And bring these guys out. Right about there should be good. They don't have to be perfectly even. Um, let's 
bring this one in a little bit more though. There we go. So those look fine. Basically they need to look like rectangles from our camera view. Now for the materials. The large cubes here, we will have a uh, satin black. So let's head over to the materials tab here and call it satin black. Hit use nodes and change the first shader or change this shader here to a mixed shader. Set the first shader to diffuse and give the color kind of a dark gray right about there. And uh, let's turn the roughness up to 0 0.1. Let's do the uh, same for the bottom one, although instead let's call it a glossy. Using the eyedropper tool here, use the same color, and turn the roughness amount down to 0 0.15. Okay, and then just so that we can see it better in the viewport, Let's just change the uh, color here down to black. So it appears that all of our cubes are using the exact same color. So we'll need to break that out. And I'm just going to call this one uh, Satin Aluminum. I hope I spelled that correctly. And let's just turn this guy's color up a little bit. Okay, so once again, this is going to be a mixed shader. Instead of having a diffuse, though, both are going to be set to glossy. So this top guy is going to be a little bit darker than the original white, and the bottom glossy is going to be a little bit lighter than our dark color. So um, now... We also need to change the factor amount from a uh, just a number to uh, Fresnel. Whoa, where's that? Where'd it go? Well, I can't seem to find the one I'm looking for. Let's uh, bring up the node editor here. Okay, get rid of that there. Bring in the Fresnel node, connect that like so. There we go, that's the one I'm looking for. Okay, so uh, let's see, what do we need to do? Change, make sure that this uh, roughness is 0 0.1 here, and for this bottom one, I want 0 0.4. So that is good. Now the backdrop here, create a new material, let's call it backdrop, and it's going to be a diffuse color, and let's just very ever so slightly tint it pink. Right about, maybe a little bit more, right about there, should be good. Okay, the left lamp, the cool lamp, create a new material, let's call it lamp key underscore cool. Change the surface type to emission. It's going to have an emission strength of five, and it's actually going to have a fairly strong blue. So right, right in there actually should be good. Create a new one for the top, so lamp underscore key, I don't know, uh, neutral. Set this to emission. Give it a strength of 10 and leave the color alone. Now for our uh, right lamp here, create a new one. Lamp underscore key warm. Set this to emission 5 and give it a slightly pink tone. So we need to set all of our small cubes to using the silver material, or satin aluminum, and then we will get into the compositor. So just select all of our small cubes here. 
Hopefully you didn't go too crazy and you can still find all of them without too much work. And then there should be one cube with our satin aluminum. Select it, hit Control L to make a link and click materials. Now all of our cubes are using the, or all of our small cubes are using the satin aluminum and all of the large cubes are using the satin black. So now let's head over to the compositor window. Click use nodes and let's set, turn on backdrop, bring in a, by hitting control shift and clicking on a render layer, it will bring in a new viewer. Let's get rid of that side panel there and turn up the sampling to 60. Okay, let's give it a quick render here and see how it looks. So far it's looking pretty good. So really all we're going to be doing for this image is giving it a vignette and then um, using a soften filter to just kind of clean up the edges. Usually in a still image you don't use the soften filter too much because it'll blur things a little bit. <clears throat> but since this is an animation, you don't really have to worry about that too much. So let's create the vignette. This is just going to be an ellipse mask. So shift A, it'll be under matte and ellipse mask right there. Okay, turn up the width to one and turn up the height. Probably right about there is good. Change the mask type to multiply. So now you'll have this oval color or this oval shape that you can actually see through. Now bring in a math node. Set the type to greater than. Connect it right like so and turn the value that we're comparing it against to zero. So now we'll have a white oval inside of a black rectangle. So uh, now all we need to do is bring in a blur node, connect it right there, change the type to fast Gaussian, and turn up the X amount, probably about 50%, and the Y amount, probably about 38 to 40%. Okay, and now we just need to bring in a mix node, connect the two there. Set this mix amount to multiply. And if we play with the factor amount, we can turn the amount of uh, vignette up or down. So I'm just going to set this probably about a little less than one. So that's looking pretty good. Now let's just bring in the soften filter. And I'm just going to turn the factor amount down to 0.5. So now you are ready to render your animation. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. If you did not like it, please let me know what I can do to improve. If you have suggestions for future tutorials, please let me know in the comments section below. If you did enjoy it, please like the video and subscribe to BlenderWiz if you haven't already. As always, thank you for watching.